All right, what's up guys? Jared Campisi, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm gonna to be doing a first ride and review on my girlfriend's 2023 Ducati Panigale V2 Bayless Edition. Uh, don't forget, this is actually our next giveaway motorcycle. So if you'd like to help support this project, be entered to win this bike when we're done, patreon.com slash Customs. It's always the first link in the description below. So for this video today, we're gonna keep it nice and casual. Um, this isn't my first ride on it. It was going to be, but then we did the uh, video over at Warhorse, or the event at Warhorse. So I actually rode it over there. Dada rode it back. So we both have now ridden this bike and I have some thoughts and feelings about it. The whole point of this is I wanna let you guys know how this bike feels, give you my honest impressions. Who is this bike for? Uh, what does it do well? What does it do not so well? And uh, is it worth purchasing for, for you, for your own personal bike? So first thing I will say right off the bat, um, I'm five foot 10. I'm sitting on this bike right now. I can flat foot it completely. I cannot do that with the V4 Panigale. Christina, who is my girlfriend, who we originally got this bike for, she's five foot four and she couldn't obviously flat foot but even in stock height she could totally ride this bike and she was fine riding this bike she rode one out in california and then she got this one we did lower it a little bit for her um which made it a little bit more comfortable for her getting it moving it around and stuff like that but if you're a shorter rider this bike could be an option for you <clears throat> because of just how thin it is and even though it does have a higher seat height um because it's a sport bike because it's so thin it is a little bit easier to get your feet down, maneuver it around and everything like that. So again, this is a Bayless edition. So this is a 20th anniversary. It is th number 3311. So they're numbered. They're, they're like in limited numbered is what they call them. They don't make like a, like a set amount, um, but they are all individually numbered. I'm not gonna start out in race mode. I'm gonna just put it in, how do I even, okay. Sport, we'll run it in sport. It is nice, you get the pretty much the same dash layout as the Panigale, uh, the big brother, and um, you get the single-sided swing arm. Let me show you guys real quick. Let me walk around the bike here. You can see it's, it's a beautiful bike. It's always been one of my favorites. It's a twin Ducati, so it's the, the classic, you know, Ducati. Beautiful, because it has that twin, they're able to design around that twin, which is a really thin engine which is why you have such a thin motorcycle. And like I said, that makes it easier to ride and gives it quite a bit of characteristics. The, the engine is a stress member of the frame, so it all connects the swing arm, the front fairing, the, uh, the front and the engine, uh, the front subframe, it all connects to the engine. So single-sided swing arm, it's a beautiful bike. Like honestly, was, the V2 I think is one of the most beautiful Panigales, the 1299, the V2, they're phenomenal. So let's get this bad boy kicked up in the gear. I'll let you guys hear the startup sequence. We've got 96 miles on this bike. I need to get at least a few hundred on it before we do the first service. Um, the one thing about twins are just because of the nature of how how big the pistons are, they do you could do get a little bit more character, we'll call it. Like look at the look at the mirrors. They're pretty much unusable. They're gonna get replaced anyway. Um, but yeah, it's just a, it's a beautiful little package. And you'll, the stock exhaust doesn't really give you much from the exhaust itself, but you still get a quite a bit of sound just right here over top of the engine, which I really like. And I've ridden a lot of Ducatis and I feel like this one kind of for me tickles that sweet spot, 157 horsepower. Um, it's usable on the street, which is really important because that's where most of these bikes get ridden We can still take it to the track and have a great time as well So let me get off my property here and then we'll uh, check back in with you guys once we're out on the road So one thing I noticed right away going from the v4 Panigale to the v2 I don't know if clunky is the right word because that's not the right word but Everything just feel now granted. This is a brand new bike. Everything's breaking in so that's gonna get better over time But the quick shifter is a little bit harsher um, The clutch the throttle Not sloppy, but just not quite as precise um, Just in general The bike feels there's a lot more feedback and I think that's just because of the nature of how these bikes are put together 
definitely the quick shifter big time i noticed a difference from the v4 platform the other thing is like i'm coming off riding one of the most insane panigales in the world like that was so highly customized so coming back to a stock bike even just a stock v4 panigale isn't going to feel that good so i'm trying to trying to figure out what things do i look past because of what i've been riding and what things are you going to experience like if you're coming from from like a japanese bike um i see people that come from like 600s maybe you have a jixer 600 um a cbr 600 you know a kawasaki 636 something like that and you get on this i think the first thing you're going to think is this bike might feel a little underpowered even though it's 40 horsepower more than what you're used to on those bikes but you really need to put this bike in race mode and ring it out to get power which is counterintuitive to how you would think that it would work with a twin um, but this the twin engine still like to be like revved out you do get punchy power band from this but you see it red red lines at 11,500 so it still does rev out quite a bit so I just want to see if I'm To me, and it might be just because I'm getting older or whatever, but I love the amount of power that this has. And even in sport mode, you're not getting like all the power like you do in race mode. So it's a little bit smoother throttle response and all that. I like being able to twist the throttle almost all the way. And you get that sensation of speed, the sound of the engine right underneath you. and. The bike just feels freaking cool, like the paint scheme and everything on here, seeing the limited edition, like it's it's a really beautiful bike. When they announced this bike, and I saw this actually for the first time over in Italy <clears throat> when we went out to uh, World Ducati Week, it's just such a beautiful bike. I'm, I'm You know me, I, I like black bikes. I've been kind of getting more into like liking colors on my bikes and all that. But when I saw this paint scheme, the Tricolore, it's such a classic Ducati. They usually do it for like special editions and stuff like that, anniversary editions. But man, it suits this bike so well. It looks so good. And the other thing that, so my point with that whole rant was, I'm starting to appreciate lower horsepower motorcycles a lot more than I used to. This road is not that fun on the V4 Panigale. Whereas on this one, super fun, dude. Oh man, and when we put an exhaust on it, it's going to be incredible. The exhaust on the V4, I, it's great. It, don't get me wrong, it sounds great. But there, it doesn't have like the cracks and the pops and all that stuff. Whereas this, the sound and the character... Let me, let me get out of here before I die. This is such a terrible intersection. Um, the sounds and the character that this bike makes... I don't know man it's really good like really good i've always wanted a v2 for myself um the 1299 i think is just way too much motorcycle for the street it's a blast don't get me wrong but you really need to be like on a highway or something to enjoy it so this really is your only option if you want a twin from ducati like a super bike a current one yeah it's the van it's panigale v2 and it sits in this kind of sweet spot between, you know, the lower 600, 750s, and then the leader bikes, you know, 1,000cc bikes, where you just have this, this V2, and there's really nothing that competes with it. And it's such a gem of a motorcycle. Like I said, you can do anything with it. Driving in traffic isn't a big deal. The clutch is super easy to pull in and out. It's got quick shifter up and down. It's got tracks control. It's got all of the... You know, you can see all the stuff down there. Engine braking control, the quick shifter, tracks control, ABS, wheelie control. So it has like all the amenities of a new bike, but it's it's small and compact and it's still stupid fast. It's still faster than 99% of the things, things on the road, but you can still do stuff with just like, you can commute with it. It's got fairings. You're not getting blasted on the highway with air. You can take it to a track day have a blast and probably have more fun than all the people on leader bikes i don't know for me personally i have my diavo i have my street fighter and if i was going to get another bike i'd probably buy a v2 that would probably be like where i would fill things in the v4 i have in the street fighter so i don't feel like i would need a v4 panigale and i think i'd have a lot more fun on something like this like just ripping around on our back roads 
Now, if you're doing a lot of highway stuff, especially racing and high speed highway stuff, sure, then get the Panigale V4. But for everything else, I don't know, man. I love this bike. It's such a good bike. And as it gets broken in and we get that exhaust on it and just little things, I think this is going to be such a freaking cool build, man, once we're done with it. But, I mean, that's kind of where this bike sits. I mean, it's more expensive than the other bikes, you know, like 600s that would be in this category. Um, but you get a Ducati, man. You get to ride a Ducati around. This bike gets so many looks. Whereas if you're riding on a Gixxer or something like that, like, they're just a lot more common. And they just, let's face it, Ducatis are Ducatis for a reason, right? Everybody wants a Ducati for a reason. Oh, I was going to go right there. That would have been bad. And then, so the other thing when it comes to this bike is the heat. That's a lot of people ask me about the heat on this bike. The honest truth is, guys, it's not nearly as bad as it used to be. And like, to me, that sound right there, that's one of the best sounds in motorcycles. And the V4 Panigale does not have that. For whatever reason, you don't get as much engine sound. I don't know if it's like the intake or how the engine produces sound like right underneath here, but it sounds so good when you tuck in and you twist the throttle. That right there is so good. I hope it comes across on audio for you guys, but if you've ridden a Panigale, a, a twin, the 1299 was the same way. It's such an incredible sound and, and, and it's that addiction. For me, it's that 30 seconds of fun. When you hard on the throttle and you hear the engine and you upshift and you get a pop and then when you downshift and you get the boom, boom, you know? It's not, it's not as good right now because it needs the exhaust, but that's what these twins do so well. And it's so hard for, for you to get that sensation on any other bike. And that's why it's one of my favorites. The other thing that's awesome about this bike, because of the geometry and how thin it is and how they're able to get the rider triangle, it's pretty comfortable to ride and the handling is insane. So we put it on the scale, it was like 450 pounds, roughly. It didn't have a, it only had half a tank of gas and we had already removed like five pounds of weight from it. But I'll tell you, dude, it almost feels as light when it's moving as our 400 pound carbon V4, which is kind of insane. Now, trust me, I can tell the difference. Don't get me wrong. But for the fact that it feels that close, holding 40 pounds over the, the V4, like that's, that's part of the reasons why these twins are so cool because they held their weight so well. And I guess that's just a, you know, a product of the engine size, where the weight is on the bike the rider triangle, how thin it is. It just feels like a 600, but it has the power of like an old leader bike, you know, like a 90s, early 2000s leader bike. And so, I don't know. I think that's what makes this bike so awesome. Um, I am starting to get a little bit of heat now, but it's just uh, just a little bit. It's probably in the 70s today, sh shockingly, in late October in Pennsylvania. You can actually see the beautiful trees changing colors over there. Actually, fall is one of my favorite times of the year in Pennsylvania. It's when we finally get like nice weather without crazy humidity and stuff. But um, yeah, I mean, if you're somewhere, if you're in a hot climate and it's 90s, 100 degrees, this bike's gonna get hot. I will say it helps it a lot if you put a, just an exhaust and a tune because from the factory, everything's so restricted now um, that they just get hotter. That's just, that's basically just, there's nothing you can do about it. And every bike gets hot. Listen to this. I love that I can actually twist the throttle and hear the sound of the, of the bike. Yeah, this thing is awesome, man. It's just fun and effortless to ride. The other thing I wanted to talk about when it comes to this bike is um, the suspension. So one of my biggest gripes with the V2, the base model V2, is it doesn't come with Olin's. And once you ride a bike with Olin's and you get used to it, it might be a little bit stiffer just to like sit and, and take a bump. But the way that it like recovers and, and the way that it handles those bumps, it's so much more confidence inspiring. And now that this bike has Olin's, 
it feels so much better than the base model from the handling the acceleration the braking it's just more stable and to me it gives me more confidence and that's 100 percent worth it in my opinion now can you still ride a base v2 and it's totally fine yes it is but when you ride it with Olin's, and that was one of the big reasons I was excited to try her bike out for the first time, because I'd never ridden a V2 with Olin's, it makes a big difference. It really does. It makes the bike feel more premium. Anytime that you don't have suspension, when you have premium suspension, it just, like I said, the bike recovers better. Everything about it just feels better. I'm going to try to pull a fast one here. Just turn around. Yeah, the only thing that's weird, been weird about this bike for me so far is the clutch. For some reason, it lets out super late in first gear. <laughs> See, like, this is a bike I feel like I can twist the throttle all the way and totally understand and manage what's happening. I was out on this road on the V4 and I opened the throttle and it's just so mind-numbingly fast that you you, you, you can't even process how fast stuff's coming up. Like, it's insane, especially on back roads like this. Obviously, it's not as bad on the highway, but you can get into a lot of trouble really fast on that bike. Whereas on this one, I think it's a much better bike where you could you can learn and grow with this bike. Like I said, my girlfriend, she's been ridden bikes, you know, riding bikes on and off for a few years. And she was an athlete, she was a hurdler, so she has coordination. And girls tend to not be as dumb on motorcycles as guys. Um, but she was able to hop on this bike, throw it in street mode, it detunes it to 100 horsepower, maybe even less. And then it feels like a 600, you know, less than a 600, I guess. So, I mean, you could be, uh, I wouldn't say don't buy this as your first bike. But you could be a sec this could be a second bike for someone and you could be totally fine on it, in my opinion. But I, I started on a 600, so I mean, I don't, what do I know, right? <laughs> this is so much fun, dude. So the other thing I need to talk about with this bike, which I think is one of the few gripes with this bike, um, are the stock brakes. And it could be because Christina barely used them, probably. Um, they might still need to like bed in. Let me grab some brakes here. Yeah, they're actually getting better. So it, that might be just a function of them needing to be used more. But when I first got on this bike and I first started riding it, yeah, it's still, I think probably because I'm used to the crazy brake setup we have on the V4. So that might be a part of it. And they just might need to be bedded in a little bit more. But yeah, they were just, I'll, I'll come back to that because I they are Brembo's and they should be fine. It's a full Brembo system setup. This this corner gets really dirty, so I got to be careful. But yeah, I can feel some serious dips in the power band from the stock tune. I don't know if that was just the tuning with the um, the cutting of throttle on the upshift or if that's actually a problem with the tune itself. Let me see. Yeah, so I think the, the more throttle you give it while you're quick shifting, the better it seems to work. I wonder if they change that from, from one mode to the other. Sport mode feels really good on this bike. Look at this guy. But yeah, I mean, there you go, guys. There's like a general overview of what this bike is, who this bike is for. And like, like I said, I've talked about my three favorite bikes of all time, which I said Diablo 1260, V4 Street Fighter, and then it was like a toss-up between Panigale V4 or this V2. That's how much I like this bike. Like, it's, it's a really good bike. And I can recommend this to people when they ask me about, you know, what bike should I buy, whatever because it's it's just such a good bike overall so easy to ride and there it has that 30 seconds of fun and i can't even imagine well i had my v2 build we did in california that was about man two and a half three years ago now with the full titanium acro exhaust on this bike it is absolutely incredible 
And like I was trying to get to earlier, when we put the full titanium acro bike on the V4, it sounds awesome, don't get me wrong, but it doesn't have those pops and crackles on the D cell and stuff, whereas this one does. And it just gives it a lot more character and it makes it a lot more fun to ride because that shit even happens at low speed. You know, when you're slowing down in second gear, when you're downshifting into first, and then obviously all the other stuff too. But so yeah, I mean, I, arguably I think this bike might be more fun than the V4 depending on what you're doing with it. But for me and how I ride now, I think I would have more fun on this bike in general. So yeah, there you go, guys. There's a first ride and review on my girlfriend's 2023 Ducati Panigale V2 Bayless. Again, we are gonna be giving this bike away. So if you wanna help support this project, be entered to win this bike, patreon.com slash camp customs. It's always the first link in the description below. If you guys have ridden this bike, let me know your thoughts and feelings in the comment section below. If it's a bike that you're interested in, let me know what you guys have questions on and uh, we'll get to them in future videos. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, give it a big old juicy thumbs up, subscribe for more, and we'll see you all in the next one. Peace. All day long I could do that. All day long. Just put an exhaust on it, it'll be perfect.